Welcome to my channel. This time, I will be showing you solutions on the problems about simple stress under strength of materials. But before that, please subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell after you watch this video. In this video, we will be solving this problem. For the truss shown in the figure, calculate the stresses in members DF, CE, and BD. The cross-sectional area of each member is 1,200 square millimeters. Indicate tension, T, or compression, C. If you noticed, we have two supports in the truss. First, the roller support. Second, the hinge support. Our next step is to determine the reactions to each support. First, to our hinge support at A, we know that a hinge support has always its vertical and horizontal reactions. That's why we have, RAY, or the vertical reaction, and RAX, or the horizontal reaction. Next, we have the roller support at B. We know that every roller support has only a reaction of vertical. That's why we have the reaction at F of RFY. To make it clearer, let us show the reactions in our truss. We have to get the reactions in our truss because this will help us solve the required values in the problem. The next step is to solve now for the values of each reactions. For RAX, its value is zero since there is no other reaction acting on the x-axis. So we will be solving now the value of reaction of F at y-axis, or the RFY. To solve for that, we will be using the summation of moment. We have to apply moment at A. We have, summation of moment at A is equal to zero. Where force is going clockwise is positive. With this, we get the values. And we have, 100 kN, multiplied to its distance from A, which is 4, added to 200 kN times 7, minus RFY multiplied to its distance from A which is 10. We transpose values to obtain RFY. And we now have, RFY is equal to 100 kN multiplied to 4, added to 200 kN multiplied to 7, all over 10. We simply solve and the answer for our reaction at F vertically is 180 kN. Next, let us solve for the value of the reaction of A vertically, or reaction AY. To solve for that, we will get the summation of force vertically. And we have, summation of force vertically is equal to zero. Forces directed upwards is positive. And we have, RAY, minus 100 kN, minus 200 kN, plus, RFY, is equal to zero. A while ago, we solved already for the value of RFY which is 180 kN. So we simply substitute. We now have, RAY, is equal to 100 kN plus 200 kN minus 180 kN. We simply solve, and the answer is RAY is equal to 120 kN. That is now the value of our reaction at A, vertically. Next, after determining our values for our reactions, we can now solve for the values of our stresses in members DF, CE, and BD. To solve for that, we will be using the section method. We will use a cutting plane passing through BD, CD, and CE. You can see in your screen the cutting plane. From the left side of our figure, you can see the members with its corresponding slope. For member BD, we have 2 and 3. For member CD, we have 3 and 4. For member BD, we get the slope from this figure. If you analyze correctly, you will know how we get the slope. Now, to solve for the hypotenuse of the slope at BD, we will simply use the formula of Pythagorean theorem. And we have, hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the square of x plus the square of y. Our x value is 3, or the length horizontally. On the other hand, our y value is the length on the vertical line which is 2. We simply substitute the values. And we have now, the square root of 3 square plus 2 square. The answer is the square root of 13. Next, we will solve for the value of the hypotenuse of slope BD. We just simply do the same with what we did a while ago. And we have, 
hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 3 square plus the square of 4. We simply solve and the answer is 5. After solving the slope of BD and CD, we can now proceed in solving the stresses in the members. We will begin solving the stress in BD. To solve for that, let us first solve for the load at AB using the summation of moment. We will have our moment at point C. We have, summation of moment at point C is equal to zero. Forces going to clockwise direction is positive. We have RAY of 120 kN multiplied to its distance from C of 4 meters. Minus BD multiplied to its slope of 3 all over the hypotenuse of square root of 13, multiplied to its distance from C of 6 meters, equals 0. We simply solve and we have 480 kN per meter minus BD times 4.99 meters is equal to 0. We transpose values, and we have, BD is equal to 480 kN per meter all over 4.99 and we have the value of load at BD of 96.18 kN. We have a positive value for BD, meaning our assumption for its direction which is going up to the left is correct. It is compression because it goes towards our chosen point of C with respect to the y-axis. In contrary, if it goes away from C, it will be tension. That is now the value for our load BD. After computing for our load at BD, we can now proceed in solving its stress value. We will use the formula, stress at BD is equal to load at BD all over cross-sectional area of BD. A while ago, we solved for the value of the load at BD and the value of cross-sectional area is given in the problem. Now, we simply substitute the values to our formula, and we have, 96.18 kN all over 1200 square millimeter. We have to convert 96.18 kN into newton using the conversion factor of 1 kN is equal to 1000 newton. We need to convert this to obtain a megapascal unit for our answer. We now have 96.18 kN times the conversion factor all over 1200 square millimeter. We have 96180 newton all over 1200 square millimeters. We know that Newton per square millimeter is equal to megapascal. We simply solve and the answer for our stress at BD is 80.15 megapascal. Again, it is compression because load BD is going towards joint C with respect to Y axis. Next, let us solve for the value of stress in CE. But before that, we will first solve for the value of load CD using summation of force vertical, or forces with respect to Y axis. We have, summation of forces at Y is equal to zero. Forces directed upward is positive. With these, we have, RAY, minus 100 kN, plus BD multiplied to its slope of 2 all over the square root of 13, minus CD multiplied to its slope of 4 all over 5. We already solved for the values of RAY and BD a while ago. So we simply substitute the values and we have, 120 kN minus 100 kN, plus 96.18 kN multiplied to its slope of 2 all over the square root of 13, minus CD multiplied to its slope of 4 all over 5, equals 0. We simply solve and we have, 73.35 minus CD multiplied to its slope of 4 all over 5. We transpose values, and we have the load at CD of 91.69 kN. It is compression because it goes towards joint C. After solving for the value of CD, we will use this to solve for the value of load at CE using the summation of force horizontally. Our forces with respect to X axis. We have, Summation of forces at X is equal to zero. Forces directed to the right is positive. We have, CE minus CD multiplied to its slope of 3 all over 5, plus BD multiplied to its slope of 3 all over the square root of 13, equals zero. We already solved for the value of CD and BD a while ago so we simply substitute the values. 
and we have CE minus 91.69 kN multiplied to its slope of 3 all over 5 plus 96.18 kN multiplied to its slope of 3 all over the square root of 13, equals 0. We simply solve and we have CE minus 135.04 kN equals 0. We transpose values and we have the load at CE of 135.04 kN. It is tension since it goes away from joint C. After determining the value of load at CE, we can now solve its stress value. We use the formula. Stress at CE is equal to its load all over the cross-sectional area. We simply substitute the values and we have 135.04 kN all over the cross-sectional area of 1200 mm square. Again, we have to convert 135.04 kN into newton using the conversion factor of 1 kN is equal to 1000 newton. We now have 135,040 newton all over 1200 square millimeters. The answer is 112.53 MPa. Again, we have a tension force since the load CE is going away to joint C. Finally, let us solve for the stress in DF. To solve for that, we will be using the joint method. You can see in your screen right now that R joint F with the members acting on it. We have member DF with its slope of 3 and 4. Now, we are going to solve for the hypotenuse of member DF using the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. We have, the square root of x square plus y square. Our x value is 3 which is the x component of the slope. And y value is 4, or the y component of the slope. We have, the square root of 3 square plus 4 square. The answer is 5. After this, we will be solving for the value of load at df using summation of forces vertical, or forces with respect to y-axis. We have, summation of force y is equal to zero. Forces directed upwards is positive. We have, rfy minus df multiplied to the slope of 4 all over 5 is equal to zero. We already solved for the value of rfy a while ago so we simply substitute the necessary values. We have, 180 kilonewton minus df multiplied to its slope of 4 over 5, equals 0. We transpose values and we have the answer for our load at df of 225 kilonewton. It is compression since it goes towards joint F or reaction RFY. After solving the value of the load of df, we can use this to solve for the value of its stress. We will use the formula. Stress at df is equal to load at df all over the cross-sectional area. We already know the values for this so we just simply substitute it to the formula. And we have, 225 kilonewton all over 1200 square millimeters. We have to convert 225 kilonewton into newton using the conversion factor, 1 kilonewton is equal to 1000 newton. We have, 225 times 1000, all over 1200, which is equal to 187.5 MPa. Again, it is compression because the load DF is going towards joint F or RFY. In here, I provided a summary of the answers for our problem. Stress in BD of 80.15 MPa, compression, stress in CE of 112.53 MPa tension, and lastly, stress in DF of 187.5 MPa, compression. That is now the solution for our problem. Please subscribe before you exit.